Welcome to How-To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to show you some of the fancier things that StatCrunch can do when calculating different statistics. In other words, this video is going to go through showing you how to separate, say, males and females and get separate outputs or how to just get someone's final exam score who's gotten a GPA of higher than a certain value. So it's definitely a little bit intermediate. And if you're very brand new to StatCrunch, you may want to watch a few of the intro videos first. So the data set that we're going to use in this case is all about students. This is the student ID, a qualitative and nominal value. The age of the student, which is a quantitative and continuous value. The year in school that the student is, which is ordinal and qualitative and discrete. So that's a freshman. That's going to be a sophomore, junior, and senior. The gender of the student, male or female, that's qualitative, discrete, and nominal data. The GPA of the student, which is quantitative, continuous data. The final exam score of the student, which in this case is quantitative and discrete. My final exam scores cannot have decimal values. They're whole values only. And the number of classes that the student has taken so far, which is also quantitative and discrete. There are no possible decimal values here. So let's say I'm very curious, for example, about final exam scores, but I want to see the final exam scores for the different genders so I can compare the males to females. And maybe I only want to see the final exam scores for students who have above a certain GPA. So that's a lot of ifs and thens that I would like StatCrunch to perform for me. So let's take this one step at a time. If I click on stat and I go to summary stats and then I choose columns because my data is all column formed, I can ask StatCrunch to make all kinds of calculations for me. It'll calculate the number of values in my sample, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, the standard error, the median, the range, the min, and so on. And so let's do one example first just to see what this would look like for a few different variables and then we'll build from there. So let's say I want to just look at the age of all of my students and I want all this information. I want the number of values in the data set, I want the mean age, I want the variance of all the ages, the standard deviation of all the ages and so on. If that's all I'm looking for, I can simply put one variable in there use all the goodies that are already here for me and click compute. And when I do that, I will get an output that tells me I have 20 people in my data set, which is true. The mean age of my entire group is about 38.9. Here's my variance and standard deviation. Here's the median age, the range of my ages. The oldest person is 78, which I can confirm. That's my oldest person in my data set. My youngest person is 21, and this is my first quartile, so 25% of my ages is below 28, and my third quartile, so that 75% of my ages are below 49 and a half. But let's say I want more than just general information about age. Let's suppose I would like to separate this out by gender. I want to also know maybe about final exams, and I'd like to maybe separate it out by GPA as well. So I'll go back to stat, summary stats and columns, but here I'm going to choose a couple of variables in different locations. So let's start first with the age of our, of our students. Let's begin with that, but I would like to group this by gender. Using group by is going to give me all of these statistical outputs for age, but it's going to show me the females in one part and the males in the other part, because that's my group by. So let's just see what that looks like first, and then we'll continue to build using where. So I expect to see all these statistics for the age variable grouped by gender. So if I click compute, and let's put this up here, that's exactly what I get. I have exactly 10 females in this group. I have 10 males. The mean age of my females is 41.8. The mean age of my males is 36.05. Two different variances. You can see that there's a little bit more variation in the age of my males. The standard deviation is also larger in the age of my males because the variance is larger. The medians are a little bit different. 
the maximum age of my females is 63, but I have a male student who's 78. So this shows you all the same information, but it's separated now or grouped by gender. All right, that's great, but I can do even more. So again, let's go back to stat, summary stats and columns. Let's continue using age. Let's group by gender again. But in this case, I also want to only look at students who have a GPA that's above a certain value. So maybe I want to look for students who have a GPA above 2.89 or something like this. In order to do that, I'm going to use the WHERE option. You can type directly in or you can build your WHERE option. I'm going to click build so that you can see what that looks like. All right, I want to build something based on the GPA. I want people whose GPA, and I'm going to go ahead and click GPA and then add column, okay? So I want their GPA to be greater than, so I'll click greater than, and it puts it up there, greater than a certain value. Well, let's say I want it to be greater than 2.56. So I want to do all these same calculations but I want it only for students who have a GPA that's greater than that value. And you can see that my history, some of the other things I've done in the past are still down here. And that doesn't matter. That won't affect anything. This is my new expression. And I click OK. So look what it's doing so far. It's saying, OK, the variable you're dealing with is age. We're going to calculate all of these statistics for age, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and so on but we're only going to do it for students with a GPA that's bigger than 2.56 and we're going to group the results by gender. Now if I click compute, I get a very nicely organized output giving me what I was looking for. So my GPA in this case, it's only for students higher than 2.56 and it's grouped by gender. Here's my females and here's my males. And notice that this is definitely working, because I know I have 10 females and I know I have 10 males, but only six of my females have a GPA that's higher than 2.56, so only six of them came out in these results. Only eight out of my 10 males have a GPA that's greater than 2.56, so only eight of them are in this result set. Here's the mean age of this group of females and the mean age of this group of males and all the other goodies that I asked StatCrunch to calculate. So when using StatCrunch, you actually have a lot of control over how you want your output grouped and which part of the output you would like it to display for you. Don't be afraid to experiment. When you go into summary stats and columns and you find yourself over here and you're thinking, okay, well, I would like to see the final exam scores but I want the final exam score where the gender of my students is only female. That's what I want. And I don't want to click on build, I just want to type it in. And then I'm going to click compute. Uh-oh, that's not going to work. Error, no rows in resulting data set. And you're thinking, I know there's females in my data set, I can see them. StatCrunch must be terribly wrong. Here's the thing, StatCrunch is never wrong. <laughs> it's rarely wrong. So if it shows you an error, something has accidentally occurred. You probably typed something in incorrectly. So let's fix that. Let's think to ourselves, well, StatCrunch doesn't understand what these words mean. It only links these words to what is in the data set. Well, look at gender. There's a capital G. And look at female. It's a capital F and it's F-E-M. So this isn't going to make any sense to StatCrunch because that's not right and that's not right. Let's get rid of it and start over. I want gender with a capital G to be equal to capital F-E-M. Now StatCrunch will understand because that's the way I have created my data. So I want final exam scores where the gender is female only. And I want all these statistics calculated for that. Now I can click Compute, and it'll give me all the stats for final exam for only females. Here are the results. 
There's only 10 females in my group. I know I did it right. And here's all the final exam stats, the mean final exam score, the standard deviation, the median, the range, and so on. So you've got a lot of control over what StatCrunch will do, but don't get frustrated with it if it gives you an error. This just means that you haven't communicated your intentions to StatCrunch correctly, and you just need to give it another try. Thank you so much for joining me.